Hello everyone, welcome to Edmit Easy. We offer a collection of free, free resources for IGCSE and checkpoint exams. Today I'm going to be solving the May June 2023 paper 2, paper 2, variance 2. And this is a 1 hour 30 minute paper, and I'll be using the scientific calculator to aid me in this. Alright. Find the temperature that is 8 degrees colder than minus 5, which is basically minus 5 minus 8, which is minus 13 degree celsius there are two prime numbers in this list and you need to find the sum of these two prime numbers so first thing is to find which of these are prime numbers and the multiples of 5 are clearly 75 and the multiples of 3 would be those which have their units adding up to a multiple of 3 so 27 will be a multiple of 3 so it's it's not a prime 93 is also one because 9 plus 3 is 12 5 plus 7 is also 12 so that'll be another one so 47 and 61 are the only ones which are not divisible by any of the um, other numbers. So they are the prime numbers. And all we need to do is find the sum of these. So 47 plus 61 is equal to 108. On 10 days, Stefan recalls the number of minutes he has to wait for a train. Now we need to complete the stem and leap diagram to show this information, where the key uh, is this, where, Z, uh, where 0, straight line 1, represents one minute so it's basically saying that um one, zero three represents three minutes and one three would be 13 minutes that's what it means by this key over there so we need to put these in ascending order so you have one three four five five eight four five five and eight next we have 12 and 11 so the 11 first and then 12 so one one is 11 one two is 12 and when it comes to 2, we have 23 and 30, 24. So instead of writing 23, 24, we'll just write 3 and 4 over there. Now, we need to find the median. Uh, we already have them in a, uh, an ascending order. So all we need to do is find the middle values. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 values. And uh, 10 is an even number. So you have to find, uh, take 5 and 6, uh, the fifth and sixth number, and take the average of them. Because there'll be 4 on this side and 4 on this side. So we just do 5 plus 8 divided by 2. 5 is 5 plus 8 is nothing but um, 13. So this will be 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5. The distance from town A to town B on a map is 3.5 centimeters, and the scale of the map is 1 is to 250,000. The scale is 1 centimeter on the map is equal to 250 thousand centimeters in real life and on the map it is 3.5 centimeters so in real life it will be x centimeters so we need to solve for x and to solve for x we do 3.5 into 250 thousand which will give us x equal to 875 thousand now we need to convert this to kilometers so um, 100 centimeters equals one um yeah, 100 centimeters equal 1 meter. So I'm going to divide this by 100. So we, I'll get two uh, zeros out of there. And then 1,000 meters is equal to 1 kilometer. So I have to divide by 1,000, which will give me 8.75 kilometers. A spinner is spun, and the possible outcomes are A, B, C, or D. The probability of spinning an A, C, or D is shown in the table. So all we need to do is find the probability of B. How do you do that? Well, um, probability always adds up to 1. So, probability of B is equal to 1 minus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.35. So, 1 minus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.35, which will give us 0 0.4 or 2 by 5. Now, this is the universal set, all right? Universal set is basically all the numbers which are in that region. So x such that x is between 20, 1 and 20, where 1 and 20 are included. And e is in, uh, is the num even numbers and n are the multiples of 5. So what are the multiples of 5? Multiples of 5 are going to be 5, 10, 15 and 20 since 20 is included. Now find the elements that are in the set e intersection n. E intersection M is basically going to be even numbers which are multiples of 5, which is going to be 10 and 20 only. 
Now, y is not a set. Y does not belong to set E. E is for even numbers. So basically, we can put down any number which is not even and which is between 1 and 20. So I can write something like 13. All right. Now, without using a calculator, work out 4 divided by 7 divided by 1, 5 by 21. First thing, we need to convert the mixed fraction over here into an improper fraction, which will be something like this. So 1 to 21 is 21, plus 5 divided by 21. So I, basically, the calculation that I need to do is 4 by 7 divided by 26 by 21. And since we have a division sign over here, I need to reciprocate this one. So I'll get 4 by 7 multiplied with 21 by 26. This is going to be 3. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, 21 divided by 7 is 3. So this is going to be 3 over here, sorry. Now, um, all I'm going to get is 4 into 3, which is 12 divided by 26. Now, it asks to be uh, for it to be in the simplest form. So the simplest form is going to be 12 divided by 2 which is going to be 6, and uh, 26 divided by that is going to be 13. So 6 divided by 13 will be the answer. Now, of course, it says to use the, uh, not use a calculator, but you can still check if your answer is correct. So if I were to do that on the scientific calculator, I will get 6 by 13 as my final answer. So it is indeed correct. Now, solve the equation 30 divided by x is equal to 6. So 30 divided by x is equal to 6 will give us 30 divided by 6 equal to x, which will give us x equal to 5. 11x minus 3 greater than or equal to 2 into 2x plus 9. The first thing we need to do is expand this bracket over here, which will give us 4x plus 18, and 11x minus 3 remains the same. Now, there is 4x and there's 11x. Uh, we would like the x term, x coefficient to be positive. So I'm going to take the 4x to the left side and take the 3 to the right side. So will give me 11x minus 4x greater than or equal to 18 plus 3. 11 minus 4 is 7x is greater than 21 is what we get. So I get x greater than or equal to 3. The, uh, this uh, inequality will have a set of solutions, not just one solution. Now, f is the point 1, comma, minus 4. So I'm going to make a point over here, which is 1, comma, minus 4. The fj vector is 8, 3. 8 minus 3 is a column vector. So what it means by this is it goes 8 units up, and then minus 3 means it goes 3 units to the left. So 3 units to the left. This is point g. And this is point f. All right? Now, we need to find the value of 3 times the vector fg. For that, we just multiply 8 into 3 and minus 3 into 3. So 3 into minus 3, which will give us 24, and this will be minus 9. Notice there's no fraction and bar over here, because uh, that is what distinguishes the column vector and the fraction. Now, fg column vector, uh, fg vector plus gh vector is going to be the sum of this. So it's going to be 8 plus minus 12 and minus 3 plus 35 and 8 minus 12 is minus 4 minus 3 plus 35 is 32 so that's going to be our answer all right now yeah the coordinates of point g so find the coordinates of point g i already drew this diagram over here which shows that if we were to go from f to g we need to go eight units up and three units left so what i'll end up be getting is um minus 4 plus 8, which will be, well, 8, oh, sorry, it'll be 4, and 1 minus 3 will give me minus, um, minus 2, right, 1 minus 3 is minus 2, uh, minus 4 plus 8 is 4, so it'll be minus 2 comma 4 is the coordinate for g. Now we need to find the magnitude of vector gh. Vector gh is minus 12 and 35. So to find the magnitude of it, we need to use the Pythagorean formula, which would be the root of minus 12 squared plus 35 squared. This is going to be 144 plus 35 squared in the under root, which is 1369. 
and then take the root of r, this is going to be 37. Right? Next. Question number 10. Um, describe fully this single transformation that shapes uh, that maps shape A onto shape B. Now, obviously, we see that there is a reflection happening over here across the line uh, y equal to 2. So there is um, a reflection about y equal to 2, right? And yeah, that's it. Now, rotate shape A 90 degrees clockwise about the point minus 1, comma 2. So this is the shape we need to first plot the point minus 1, comma 2. So minus 1, comma 2 will be over here. So I'm just going to, yeah. Now, if you see on the side over here, I have made some notes, which would be to do with reflection in the clockwise direction. Over here is clockwise, 90 degrees clockwise, so perfect. Let's take a random point, 3, comma, 2. If you were to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, which is this way, the point will be 2, comma, minus 3. And then minus 3, comma, minus 2. And then minus 2, comma, 3. Now, how do we see that? Well, um, the easiest way to see that would just be to notice how um, if I were to draw a straight line part from the origin over here, it appears to be 90 degrees. And then these would fall on a straight line over here. And these would fall on a straight line as well. So basically, if one of them is perpendicular, then the rest of them are also perpendicular to each other. I know that this is a bit weak when it comes to mathematical proof, but um, this is enough at the IGCC level. So let's just get to it. Minus 1, comma 2 is over here. If you have a point which is 3, comma 1, when you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, it will become 1, comma minus 3. So this will be one of them. The next one is 3, comma minus 1. 3, comma minus 1. So the minus 1 becomes the x axis. So it will be minus 1 over here. And this becomes negative. So it will be minus 1, comma minus 3 over here. Next. 4 comma minus 3, the minus 3 becomes this over here, and this becomes minus 4. And then over here, we have 6 comma minus 3, so it becomes um, minus 3 comma minus 6. So the shape will look something like this. So straight line, straight line, straight line, and there you go. Now when it comes to um, identifying this for the examiner, you can just write... Um, B in the center, so they'll know that this is for B. You can show this as you're working over here. Now, next, enlarge shape A by scale factor minus 2 with the center of 2, comma 0. So, first is 2, comma 0 is our center. So, 2, comma 0 over here. I'm going to use a different color for this. Um, let's take red. So, 2, comma 0 over here. The only thing you need to do is take these points and draw straight lines passing through them like this like uh i obviously can't draw very straight lines but just draw lines like these and the easiest way to go about it is find the corresponding lines and find a way where the distance between them is twice as what it was originally so i'm just going to draw them again um let's take these two points which is three comma one and three comma minus one and just draw the straight lines you notice that the distance between them is two units. So you find a point where there are four units apart. So this will be one, two, three. So it's not there. One, two, three, four, five. So it's somewhere between this over here, where there are exactly four units apart. And we draw that over there. The next thing is that it's negative, which means that it is reflected across the y-axis as well. So if at all anything, it will look something like um, this. Uh, obviously, be a bit bigger, but um, after drawing um, these lines over here, you'll find um, where it should be and how it should be. Next, question 11. The diagram shows the shape ABCD and it is formed by the sector of two circles with the same center O. Both, um, both sector angles are 140 degrees and OC is 3.2 degrees, uh, is 3.2 centimeters and CB is 2.6 centimeters. The area of the shape is k, k pi centimeter squared. You need to find the value of k. 
So to do this, we need to find the total area, which is the sector BOA, and then subtract from it the area COD. So area BOA, so like this, is going to be pi into the radius squared. The radius is going to be the sum of this, which is going to be 2.6 plus 3.2, which is 5.8. So 5.8 squared. Now, area, this is an O, sorry. Area COA, COD, is going to be pi into this radius, which is 3.2 squared, right? Now, all we need to do is find the difference between them. And to do that, we'll get 5.8 squared pi minus 3.2 squared pi. And the final answer will be 5.8 squared minus 3.2 squared pi. We get 23.4 pi. So the units are also matching. So in the end, it's going to be centimeter squared. The pi pi cancels out from k. We get 23.4. Yeah. Now. One solution of the equation ax squared plus b is equal to 181 is x equal to 8. A and b are both positive integers greater than 1. This bold line is extremely important and basically we get ax squared plus b is equal to 181. When x is equal to 8, we get a into 64 plus b is equal to 181, which is going to be written as 64a plus b is equal to 181. All right. Now, um, we know that a and b are both positive integers which are greater than 1. And therefore, the only way we, uh, we have um, a few possible integers, a can be 2 or 3 or 4 or on and on. on. We basically need to find the value of b for which a is one of these integers. So I'm going to start off with 2. Assuming a is equal to 2 because that is greater than 1, I'll get 128 plus b is equal to 181. Now let's see if I can go equal to 3. 64 into 3 is 192, which is greater than 181, which will mean that b has to be negative. And it is a given over here that a and b are both greater than 1. So therefore, a has to be equal to 2. So if a is equal to 2, we get b equal to 181 minus 64 into 2, which is 128, 53. So b is equal to 53. And I can write over here a is equal to 2. Now, Write on the other solution of the equation, ax squared plus b is equal to 181. So we can write this equation as 2x squared plus 53 is equal to 181. And we solve for x squared, which is going to be 181 minus 53 by 2, which will be 181 minus 53 is 128 divided by 2 is 64. So x is equal to the square root of positive 1 and negative plus minus square root of 64. So x is equal to 8 is already a solution given to us. x is equal to minus 8 will be the second solution. All right. A, B, C, and D are points on a circle. And A, B is parallel to D, C, and angle A, C, D is equal to 32 degrees. Cause A, C, and D, B intersect at E, we need to find the value of x. All right. So one thing is that the arc C, B draws uh, the angle over here and over here. And similarly, uh, we see that I arc DA draws angle over here and angle over here. So these two angles are the same. That's one thing. So we got 32 degrees over here. Now, if you notice, um, angle BAC and angle BDC and angle ACD and angle ABD, all of the angles that I've marked over here are the same. And the reason behind this is the fact that they are all um similar that we see over here this is x degrees and we see that this is 32 degrees so therefore triangle a x b uh, a e b and d e c are both similar in nature and therefore their angles will be the same as well so i can write down over here that this is equal to 32 and that this is equal to 32 degrees and finally x will be equal to uh, 180 minus 64, which is 116 degrees. Now, f inverse of x, f of x is equal to 5x plus 2. We need to find out f inverse of x. And to do that, we simply write it as y is equal to 5x plus 2. Then y minus 2 is equal to 5x 
then x is equal to y minus 2 by 5. Now we just rewrite this as f inverse of x is equal to x minus 2 by 5. Now c is the point 5 comma minus 1 and d is the point 13 comma 15. We need to find the midpoint of c d and the midpoint is simply the um, average of the x values and the y values. So it'll be 5 plus 13 which is 18 divided by 2 which is 9 and minus 1 plus 15 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. So this will be 9 and 7. Find the gradient of CD so that we change in y which is 15 minus minus 1 divided by 13 minus 5. 15 plus 1 is 16, 13 minus 5 is 8 so we get a gradient of 2. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of CD. The most important word over here is perpendicular bisector. If it was just a line is going perpendicular to it, then it would be meaningless. It's a lot simpler that way. So basically, we need to first form, uh, use this logic, which is m1 into m2 is equal to minus 1. We use 2 as many of these values. So 2 into m2 is equal to minus 1. And m2 is equal to minus 1 by 2. So any line with a gradient of minus 1 by 2 will be perpendicular to the line CD. Now, we know the gradient, so y is equal to minus x by 2 plus c. We need to find a perpendicular bisector, which means that it has to pass through the center of CD, the midpoint of CD, which is 9 comma 7. So, 7 is equal to minus 9 by 2 plus c. Minus 9 by 2 is minus 4.5, which will go to the other side to give us c equal to 7 plus 4.5, which is 7... Um, yeah, sorry, 7 plus 4.5, which is 11.5. So the answer is going to be y is equal to minus x by 2 plus 11.5. Yeah. Write 0 0.621, where six, uh, where the 2, 1 is repetitive, so it's re uh, recurring. So 0 0.621, 2, 1, 2, 1. All right, that's how the, that's how the decimal is. I'm going to write that equal x. Now let's do 10x. So 10x is equal to what? Multiply this with 10, we get 6.2121. I'm going to leave the repetition to only twice. Now next thing I'm going to do is 1000x. So I'll get two more decimal places. So this will be 6.21.21 dot dot. Now all I'm going to do is 1000x minus 10x is equal to 621.2121 minus 6.2121 so this will cancel out and i'm going to be left with 621 minus 6 which is going to be 615 and 1000 minus 10 as we know is 990 so we got 990x is equal to 615 so x is equal to 615 by 990 and i'm just going to check that on my calculator and i get 0 0.6212121212121, which is what we needed over here. So the answer is 615 by 990. All right. Number 17. The diagram shows a triangle with an acute angle marked x degrees, and the area of the angle, area of the triangle, is 243 centimeters squared. So over here, we have to use the sine rule, which is basically going to be sine x in, uh, sorry. So we sine x into 71 into 92.5 divided by 2 is equal to the area which is 2143 centimeters squared. I'm just going to have to make x is the formula. And to do that, we need to do 243 into 2 divided by 92.5 divided by 71. And that gives me 0 0.6526. Then I simply take the sine inverse of that, which gives me x equal to 40.74 degrees. Obviously, you have to show the working for that, but I didn't have a space for it. So I'm just going to write down x is equal to sine inverse of 2143 into 2 divided by 71 into 92.5. There you go. Make x the subject of the formula. So I got 2x minus 5 into c is equal to 3x. So 2xc minus 5c minus 3x is equal to 0. Then take x common. I got 2c minus 1 minus 5c is equal to 0 and then I get x is equal to 5c divided by 2c minus 1. 
five C divided by two C minus one. M is inversely proportional to the square of T plus two. When M is equal to zero point six four, so I can uh, write this proportionality as M is equal to K divided by T plus two whole squared, and I can put M as that and T as that. So T is equal to three plus two is five. Five squared is twenty five. And m is equal to 0 0.64. So 0 0.64 into 25 is equal to k. So I get k is equal to 60. So this in turn becomes m is equal to 16 divided by t plus 2 whole square. When n t is equal to 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 squared is 100, 16 divided by 100 is 0 0.16. So the answer for m when t is equal to 8 is 0 0.16. Now, in the Venn diagram, shade the region A, intersection B, not intersection C. So let's first, uh, you have to use different colors for this one. Um, A, intersection B, let's solve that. Uh, B dash, uh, sorry, is going to be, I'm going to highlight it over here, everything except B. So it's going to be everything over here. All right. That is the value of B dash over here. Now, A intersection with that is going to be this part over here. And C intersection with that is going to be, let's take black, is going to be only this. So the answer is going to be this, the black one. All right. Solve the equation phi sine x is equal to minus 3 for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 360 degrees. So sine x will simply be making a uh, sine x exception formula it will give us minus 3 by 5. And x is equal to sine inverse of 3 by 5. We don't take sine inverse of minus 3 by 5, we take sine inverse of 3 by 5, which is 0 0.6. So sine inverse of 0. Point, sine inverse of 0. 0.6 is 3. 6.87 degrees. Now, here's the thing. This was available for uh, 0 to 360. I'm going to write the mnemonic that I know, which is all. So, sine, cos, and tan. So, I'm just going to write that over here. Um, all of them are positive. Sine, cos, and tan. Sine, cos, tan. Sine, cos, tan. Sine, cos, tan. All of them are positive over here. Sine is positive over here, negative over um, here. So this is what the graph looks like for the trigonometric functions in the range uh, where x is between 0 and 360. And over here, we see that sine of x is negative. So for sine of x to be negative, it has to be in quadrant 3 or in quadrant 4. So we got the principal angle, which is x equal to 36.87. And basically what that looks like is over here, we have an angle 36.87 degrees. And we need to find the value, what this would be by, um, we need to find out this value, which is going to be 180 plus 360.87. And over here, we need to find out this entire value, which would be 360 minus 36.87. So let's do 180 plus 36.87, that's going to be, 216.87 degrees and the next one is 300, 360 minus 36.87 which is 323.13 degrees and over here if you notice it solved the equation and it's worth three marks so there are probably going to be more than one solutions which is what we saw over here now write as a single fraction in the simplest form 5 divided by 3x plus 2 plus 4 divided by 2x minus 1 so all i'm going to have to do is take the lcm so the lcm is going to be 3x plus 2 into 2x minus 1, 5 into 2x minus 1, plus 4 into 3x plus 2. This is going to be 10x minus 5 plus 12x plus 8, divided by, because it says in the simplest form, you have to expand the denominator as well. So this is going to be 3 into 2, which is 6x squared minus 3x plus 4x, which is going to be plus x minus 2. So this ends up being 22x plus 3 divided by 6x squared plus x minus 2. And that's in the simplest form because we cannot divide this any further.
bag A and bag B each contains red, uh, contain, uh, red sweets and yellow sweets. Anna picks a sweet from random, uh, rand at random from bag A and Ben picks a sweet at random from bag B. The probability that Anna picks a red sweet is 15. So Anna is picking from uh, bag A. So the probability of red and this is in red uh, in bag A is equal to 2 by 5. So probability of a yellow sweet in bag A is going to be 3 by 5 because there are only two types of sweets. Now, the probability that Anna and Ben both pick a yellow sweet is 1 by 10. So for that uh, statement over here, we need to multiply the probability of yellow in bag A with the probability of yellow in bag B. So first thing we need to find out the probability of yellow in bag B and this is equal to going to be what um 1 by 10 is equal to 3 by 5 into Py so Py is equal to 1 by 10 divided by 3 by 5 which is 1 by 10 into 5 by 3 so that will give us 1 by 6 find the probability that Anna and Ben both pick a red sweet so the probability of yellow in bag B is that and the probability of red in bag B is 5 by 6. You need to find the probability that Anna and Ben both pick a red sweet. So the Anna is picking from bag A and the probability of red is 2 by 5. And the probability of red in bag B, which is what Ben is picking from, is 5 by 6. So 2 by 5 into 5 by 6, 1 by 3. That's the final answer and that's it for question paper 22 from the May June series for the exam code which is uh, subject code which is 0580.